Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin in the name of Allah, the merciful, the kind. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The praise to you for Allah, the Lord of all the world. Assalamu alaikum. Right, okay. Um, you said so many great things that um, uh, I would love to echo you this. Um, I'll give you a two minute ML. And I'll do this because I think it will frame a lot of what I'm saying. After 9 11, I spent a year on the road. Uh, but my husband and I had a three-week-old daughter, and we spent a week, a year almost, like at civic halls, church halls, Methodist centres, synagogues, school halls, um, CNN, BBC, Sky, and it was all, as the sister said, about there's this big international event beyond our control, beyond anything we have to do with, but somehow we have to react to it. Well, we're anti-violence, we're anti-extremism, we're anti-terrorism. Oh, we're really nice, really. And after a year of this, I just thought, it, and it was actually in this room, in the anniversary of 9-11, where there was more media here, that they, they held an anniversary event. No Muslims turned up, um, really. And the media turned up in droves. And I, I, was, I was set to read out a dua. And it was just a horrible experience. And I thought, I can't do this any longer. I'm, I was exhausted, I had fatigue. Um, and emotionally and spiritually, in every way, I thought, I've had enough. I can't keep saying, I'm anti-terrorism, I'm anti-violence. It just felt like, here, international incident will be on my control, I've got to react. Another incident, and you know, you just become like a marionette, like a, a puppet, just reacting to all of these things. And we need to snap the strings. We've got to snap the strings of being the, 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 the marionette puppet. And we need to be the one who is actually engaging. So we decided to put out a mail, which is a lifestyle magazine, geared towards the Muslim community, and it was about what we are, what we stand for, not what we're against. Yeah, we're anti -mart. let's just take that as a given, right? Because generally, uh, there's not many people I've met in my life who are actually for violence, extremism, terrorism, global violence, global violence. Me. Good. So, if we're for all these... If you uh... Sorry, young <laughs> you know, I don't. You know, you don't mean people are for these things. But what, but what are we for? What do we stand for? What are we about? And so we decided to create a mail that showed the normalisation of Muslims. It was Muslims who were doing music, Muslims who were doing art, Muslims who were doing uh, fashion design, Muslim photographers. The real life story. When we ran a, a front cover story with Sifu McKenzie, who is a, a convert to Islam, a martial artist, studied under the. Um, the lineage of those who taught under Bruce Lee and Wing Chun, and he was our front cover story. He, he then got 40 follow up phone calls, and I think that that's one of the, the, the beginnings of the Ninjabi story because his wife, um, she, she is also a martial artist, and she, she teaches women, and they have these whole um, you know, hijabi sessions for, for, for sisters. And it became a, we, we often get people who were in a mill in a very normal fashion. Um, we give them a lot of space, we give them a lot of room, and the media then pick up on it. And it's about what we are, rather than what we're against. But sometimes we do have to react. And just, I want to just talk a couple of minutes about reacting. Um, the first thing I'll say is, who, how many of you know what BBC have your say is? Not very many. How many of you know what um, uh, the Guardian's comment is free is? Not exactly. Yeah, the room, are we? And how many of you have signed up to either of these? Because you can't comment unless you sign up. Well, that's really sad. <laughs> that's, that's quite pathetic, really, actually. He's a journalist. Right, okay. The, I mean, this is what I would call basic entry-level media engagement. Right? You have these forums. BBC Have Your Say on the internet. BBC Have Your Say is so read, so listened to, and so is commenters free. But if we're not signing up, all you have to do actually with the BBC is sign up and say, this is the comment I most like. So instead of it being the hysterical, Muslims are taking over the universe type comments, um, it'll be, it could be, if enough of you sort of vote for it, believe me, 128 votes, 158 votes, you know, these, type of, these are the type of numbers we're dealing with, bumps that story up to the top of the, of the comment that we like. To make a, a paragraph comment of something coherent, you need to be signed up. If you're not prepared to even be bothered to sign up to that on a story, then what are we doing? You know, that is the type of very beginning entry level. You know, talking to, and this is the, the sort of media way it's going forward. Once upon a time, it used to be letters to editors. 
in those days, I would have said to you, it's got to be minimum of a, a maximum of a page. You should always be able to see your signature at the bottom of a letter. Editors do not have the time to read pages and pages and pages of letters. I get them in the mail all the time. Right? You should be able to see your signature at the bottom of the page. Make your major points in the opening paragraphs. Editors edit from the bottom up. Right? So that's if you're writing a letter to an editor. Entry level reactive engagement. That's bottom line. If, you're not, if we're not doing that, we're really not doing it. And when we do react, we should be reacting positively to hugging reporters, you know? That it, it's not just the bad stories we've got to react to. React to the bad stories, oh, Muslims are saying this, Muslims are doing that. Oh, that's terrible. We must write in a letter, right? And say how awful that is. But what happens when it's a good show that we like? What happens when it's something positive? Because it's really, you can bet, absolutely, if there's a positive story, there'll be people writing in saying, that's really bad, right? So there was a, a, a brother I know who was working with Channel 4 at the time. He did a very, very good program, post 7-7, and there was lots and lots of negative feedback, right, for this program. It was, it was a very fair program. And so his producers started to get a bit twittery, because he didn't like all this negative feedback. So then, the one started to write to people and say, well, look, did you like the program, said, yeah, well, can you write in and say you like the program? So people started to write and say, well, we like that program. That was good. And so then his producers started to have this balance. Well, there's people that don't like it, well, but there's lots of people that do like it too. Well, that's all right then. So it's not just about reacting when something's bad. It's also about reacting when something's good. But really, reacting is just bottom, it's entry level. We really should be moving well away from that into absolute full-on engagement about not saying what we're against, what we don't like, or what we like, and somebody else's agenda, but setting our agenda. How do we set our agenda? And that's the goal I'll tackle in the next few minutes. The first thing I would say is that, and, and the sister underlined this again and again, it's got to be as we are generally. It doesn't just have to be about Muslim issues. We need to set the agenda if we're doctors, perhaps we should go on a program or a story in relation to being a doctor, community garden project. I'm, I'm having a, an issue chasing a community garden project at the moment. You wouldn't believe it, would you? It's like, oh my dear God. But, um, you know, marrows aren't that exciting. <laughs> um, it won't get you into trouble, promise. But, you know, engage as human beings. Don't just engage as Muslims. We always, well, we've, got be, we've got to be ambassadors for our faith, speakers our faith. No, nothing better than when Hassan calls up on the radio or you listen to him, Abdullah or Muhammad or whatever his name is, and he's going, that Liverpool match was rubbish. You know, on the sort of 606 Radio 5 Live after a football match. You know, oh God, did you see, man, you pants? And you're thinking, oh, yeah, thank you, Hassan, because Hassan isn't just calling up going, oh, you know, about the East and Muslims that, and Muslims this, and you know, or whatever. He's talking about how lousy, you know, Beckham was particularly free kick or something like that. That's engagement, and his name's out there, and that's positive. And you want, you know, people to call up just about those kind of very everyday things. Don't just engage as Muslims, engage as, as you are as human beings. I did one show, I do it in sort of slots of about eight or ten, and it's a Terry Wogan show, it's called Pause Before. And I'm on there as a Muslim, right? Because you know that Christian, you know, I am on there as a Muslim. But I don't hit them with Quran and Hadith every week, you know. I don't whack them, you know, all those theology and the Arthur, you know. I talk about my chickens. I talk about my pedometer. I talk about my kids. I talk about exams. I talk about my mum in the hospital. I talk about whatever. And at the end of it, or in the middle of it, or somewhere, I say, there's a Muslim saying. You know, I don't say, and, you know, on the on the authority of, you know, this one, on the authority of that one, and, you know. I, I take a few liberties. I cut it short. I say, there's a Muslim tradition. There's a Muslim saying. I might say that, you know, in the Quran it says, every now and then. Sometimes I didn't even mention Islam or Muslim at all. I could go weeks without mentioning 